Have you ever been listening to your favorite band train and asked yourself, is this what they call music? Don't worry. It is. Now that's what I call music is an ongoing series of hit song compilations. Are you ready for now? 17 of today's hottest superstars in one all new power pack collection. So to learn what they call music, I went to my local Target, went straight to the CD aisle, picked up some now CDs, went back home and began the process of educating myself. Now that's what I call the first question I have is about these numbers. Am I starting too late? Do I have to listen to now one through 84 before this to catch up on the lore? Thankfully not, but knowing more about the series itself would be cool. Now that's what I call music started out as a collaboration between Virgin Records and EMI. Virgin founder Richard Branson said, We were looking for new ways to break new artists and were regularly being distracted by other labels trying to license our songs. So we decided we should make our own hit compilation. We knew we didn't have enough artists to succeed on our own, so we asked EMI to partner with us. They were the establishment, we were the upstarts, but they could see the logic in it and agreed. They also agreed on a name, which came from a poster Richard bought for the Virgin office. It showed a pig and a chicken with the caption, now that's what I call music. This poster is also why you'll see a pig in Now's marketing every so often. Now that's what I call music made its way onto UK shelves as a vinyl and cassette in November 1983. It's a double album with a pretty good track list, considering this only represented two labels. Phil Collins, Bonnie Tyler, Tina Turner, Men at Work, Men Without Hats, The Human League, a solid compilation which made it to number one on the UK album chart. Some light competition in the pop hit compilation market followed, most notably the Hits album, which came from CBS and WEA, which you might know as Warner Brothers. I didn't know about this compilation, but they gave Now a run for its money for a few years. But after 1989, the brand went all over the place, rebranding, going away for a few years, changing labels. Uh, the last mainline entry was in 2004. Then again, I gotta remember that the reason I don't remember the Hits albums is because they never came to the US. Now, however, did in October 1998 solely through Virgin. Like the first UK edition, Now One was a solid first step. Backstreet Boys, Janet Jackson, Spice Girls, Hanson. Sure, you're missing big 1998 songs from Shania Twain, Celine Dion, Will Smith, uh, but it's not a bad collection. Though some of these track list placements are insane. Best example, Barbie Girl by Aqua is on here. Take a quick second to guess what could follow it. For real, take a second, really think it over. Even, leave it in the comments if you want, just as you know, compare with what the actual answer is. Um, though I will say, if some guy out there manages to get this right, then the police need to arrest this man. Both the US and UK series have existed since their debut, leading to 115 UK editions and 87 US editions as of August 2023. However, the two series are called the same thing, like there's not a US or UK mark to differentiate them, so I could see a newcomer getting confused if they don't know that these are separate entities. For example, Now 115 came out on July 28th of this year, which was followed on August 4th by Now 87. The best-selling mainline U.S. compilation was Now 5 in November 2000. However, if we include spin-offs, then the best-selling Now album ever is Now That's What I Call Christmas from 2004. It's the eighth best-selling holiday album in Billboard chart history. But I don't care about Christmas. Santa never gave me 18 of some of today's biggest hits. 18 of some of today's biggest hits. So to take back my power from that jolly son of a bitch, I got the three Now CDs released so far in 2023. Let's start at the beginning with entry 85. 85 starts with Taylor Swift's Antihero. Forget music, now that's what I call an economic stimulant. Unholy, yes. Super freaky girl, yes. I'm good, made you look, die for you, golden hour. Uh, you might not like all of these songs, but I think all of them make sense being here. Nearly all of the included songs are top 40 hits. The exceptions are Rosalind's Snap and Lizzo's To Be Loved? That song was all over TikTok, and it only got to 55? 
That is the most surprising thing I've heard about Lizzo in recent memory. Yeah, out of the 16 main songs here, I liked most of them. And I'm even starting to see the benefit of a compilation like this. Remember what it was like to listen to music in the vinyl and CD days. If you wanted You Get What You Give by New Radicals, you had to buy the entire CD from which it came. And that's not a bad thing. That record slaps. But some people felt annoyed that they had to buy a 10 to $15 CD to only listen to a fraction of it. But now that's what I call music. You can get You Get What You Give, plus Because of You by 98 Degrees, plus What I Got Clean Version by Sublime. Now that's what I call uh, one hell of a deal. Hey, since I just mentioned it, let me revisit that parenthetical real quick. The songs on Now compilations are all clean. While that's not a big deal for us adults, it does matter if you've got kids, or if you're at a company function, or if you're in a situation where you just don't want swear words around. Even the numbers for these entries work. Uh, let me explain. At first, the Now team thought that numbering each entry would be bad, since it would immediately date each album. But in practice, they found that it helped with brand building. The number could serve as a nostalgic reminder of where you started with the series, or a marker for an important time in your life. My newborn is such a bundle of joy. I, I love being a parent. How old is he? Um, when did Now 86 come out? Good question. Now 86 came out in May of this year. Now 86 starts with Creepin'. Yeah, that, that makes sense. TikTok's influence seeps in pretty hard with Miguel's Sure Thing sped up. Kill Bill, yes, absolutely, 100%. Yes, Kill Bill, absolutely. Escapism, for sure. Players, yeah. The rest though, sure. The second half has a bunch of songs from the bottom half of the Hot 100. Granted, in 2023, it's harder than ever to comprehend a song's impact based solely on the charts. Like, Sabrina Carpenter's Nonsense is on here. That song peaked at 56, but I've seen a bunch of people clamoring for it online. For the people who loved it, they loved it. That said, were Lottery or I'm Not Here to Make Friends big on TikTok or something? If they were, then my bad for not plugging into the culture hard enough, but I feel like I'm pretty jacked into this mainframe hard enough to hack the planet. Your brain might take this opportunity to lay into current pop music and how it sucks and how it was way better when Emblem 3 was around. But across Now's history, most albums have had their mix of undeniable hits and Deniable hits. For example, Now 35, released in August 2010. This is objectively one of the best Now albums because it came out when I was in high school. That one had California Girls, Alejandro, Rock That Body, Bulletproof, Cooler Than Me. But do you honestly remember Impossible by Chantel, Lover Lover by Gerard Neiman, Pray For You by Jason and The Long Road to Love? Actually, I'll help you with that last one. It's the country song where the guy sings about all the different ways he wishes his ex would die. Pray your brakes go out, run down a hill. I pray a flower pot falls from a windowsill. The latest CD, Now 87, kicks off with some big names, Miley Cyrus's Flowers and Post Malone's Chemicals. Flowers being on this compilation specifically is kind of weird since it was a hit back in January, but this CD came out in August. Maybe they just couldn't get the rights for this one until now. Waffle House by Jonas Brothers is fun. It's about how their family might fight, but they're always brought back together thanks to love and Waffle House. That's a hell of a testimonial, isn't it? I'd be estranged from my family if it weren't for the all-star special. Side note, on their website, Waffle House calls their dishes nutritionals. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm loving the Pink Panthers representation. Boys a Liar Part 2 is on here, which makes a lot of sense. Or as it's called on Now 87's track list on streaming, The Boys a Liar Part 2. The rest is an even more mixed bag than Now 86. On one hand, it's cool to see picks from folks like Zara Larson and Gracie Abrams, or as the album on streaming calls her, Gracie Abrams. Uh. On the other hand though, a chunk of these songs never charted at all. Again, that doesn't mean they weren't big in some other way or that they will never chart or that they are bad. I like Heart Wants What It Wants by BB Rexa, but like, where has it been? Cause it's on here. Now is considering it a hit. It's kind of ironic then that this one just happens to end with two of the biggest songs on the chart right now. I haven't mentioned it yet, but all of these compilations end with exactly two country songs, and one of them is always by Morgan Wallen. Tracy Chapman's Fast Car is great, and Luke Combs' cover of it is good because it is just Fast Car and he doesn't really do a lot with it. But then again, you don't really have to do a lot to that song to make it any better. Like, it's, it's fine. And then the final song is Morgan Wallen's Last Night. 
This song is like a Hydra, except when you cut off a head, two think pieces take its place. There are many things you can say about Morgan, or what the song's dominance means, and yet there is little to be said about the song itself. Not even the commercial for Now 87 knows what to do with it. And yet it will likely be the biggest song of 2023. Why? Uh, it's by a recognizable name, it's got enough influences from pop, rap, and country to bring fans of those genres in, but not too much of them to alienate those who aren't fans. Some portion of his audience likes the idea of listening to him despite the imaginary liberal boogeyman. The melody is genuinely the catchiest to hip-hop music this year, and if the other songs across these three compilations are any indication, nothing else comes close to being as catchy. Sure, some songs claim the number one spot for like a week, but then fall because people move on. And sometimes songs rely on melodies from older songs as a kind of cheat code. Which brings us to the first thing we can take from pop music in 2023. People really like old music, huh? There's a lot of sampling older songs or just older songs outright. Creepin' interpolates a Mario Winans song, Hold Me Closer interpolates Tiny Dancer, Baby Don't Hurt Me interpolates What Is Love, I'm Good interpolates Jesus Christ but as a sound wave, and Bloody Mary, Die For You, and Sure Thing are all just older songs. I'm also starting to realize there's like no rap on these things. There are rappers, Ice Spice, Future, 2Z, but they're on pop songs. Now, for 2023, this might actually make sense. So for reference, I went back to 2018's compilations. Mind you, this was the year of I Like It, Sicko Mode, a ton of Drake hits like Nice For What, In My Feelings, God's Plan. And the only pure rap songs from that year's compilations were Stir Fry, Taste, and Lie by NF. I have nothing against NF, and if you're a fan of him, that's totally fine. But if he is getting on your popular hit compilation instead of Drake, something's gotta be up. There's also not much country. Like I mentioned before, any country songs have been sequestered to the last two spots on these CDs. Though, now seems to be boosting its country presence with more specific spin-offs. There's even an entire country section on their website. And hey, there's also been a few rap-specific compilations. And I mean a few. Actually, now that I think about it, where is the pop music in languages other than English? BTS has been on a Now disc once, and it was their song with Coldplay. Blackpink has been on a Now disc once, and it was their song with Selena Gomez. Bad Bunny has never been on a Now CD. Think about that. Arguably the biggest star in worldwide pop music is not what some would call music. I guess it's also worth mentioning the selection of extra tracks on each compilation called What's Next. At the end of each disc, there's three or four tracks from up and coming acts. Sometimes they get it right and predict a big hit. Now 53 had Shut Up and Dance. Now 64 had Ocean Eyes. Now 71 had Number One Fan by Muna. Now 81 had The Last Man on Earth by Wolf Alice. Sorry, I need a second to let the taste wash over me. So there it is. Now that's what I would mostly call music. But it's like a famous philosopher once said, does now have a future? It's a brand that exists mainly on CDs. What it would call music is not as accurate to the times as I would like, and streaming is just kind of looming over it while licking its lips. Will now survive for another 87 compilations or another 115 in the UK? The answer surprised me, and it might surprise you too. Maybe. First off, we have to remember that, in some part, thanks to my efforts, you're welcome, the CD market still exists. There are still people out there buying and playing CDs. You know what else plays CDs? Cars. Cars still have CD players. As any member of the NOW team will tell you in interviews, the average age of a US car is 11 and a half years, which means most cars on the road right now still have CD players. However, new cars usually don't have them, so while the NOW series is safe for the time being in that regard, that might be an issue in like 5-10 years. In case CDs ever die out, they never will if I have a say, goddammit, NOW has also moved to put its compilations on streaming. Plus, they've also become a playlist curator. On Spotify, they have their own profile and a Today's Top Hits playlist with nearly 13,000 likes. By comparison, Spotify's own Today's Top Hits has 34 million. Even with a grasp on the CD market and a push into streaming and live events, I don't know what the future holds for now. 
At the end of the day, these CDs are just another way for labels and artists to get their songs to more people. And if they find easier ways to do it, then this quickly becomes, then that's what I used to call music. And if it does fade away, there's a hole in the market that needs to be filled. Are you ready for some of today's songs? Bye, it never die. Women are my favorite guy. You and me make the perfect couple. Ooh, a laser disc. The cheat's playing something on a laser disc. Don't pee on the floor, use the Commodore. Yeah. But that's one of the people for Tello. E per tutto c'era matato. E tutte le cotte. It doesn't even make any sense. I'm the youngest boy.